Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. A few months ago, I finished up a subwoofer project that I called the Peerless Mini Subwoofer. Pretty creative name, right? I designed that specifically to work with this project here, the Harmonious Table Radio, named roughly after its intended recipient. I already had a preamp and amplifier in mind that I wanted to use for this project, but I wanted to try a new driver, something I hadn't used before and something that would work well in a small sealed enclosure. Some of my friends from the Parts Express Tech Talk forum recommended this Peerless TC9 3.5 inch full range driver. So I picked a few up and I did what most experienced do-it-yourself speaker builders do. I stuck that sucker in an old Ely coffee can and I pumped some Van Halen through it. <laughs> the can was close to the cabinet volume that I had worked up for this project and it sounded pretty good. It did seem to add a little flavor to the music though. I detected notes of fruit, caramel, and chocolate. The speaker sounded just fine, so all I had to do now was to settle on a final design shape and work out the volume for the speakers and compartments for the amplifier and preamp. I sketched out several ideas at work while I was on break, and after some tinkering, this basic concept began to emerge. I liked it, so I worked out the speaker volume along with the space needed for the amp and preamp, and I was off to the races or actually the table saw. I used one quarter inch MDF for most of the cabinet. I started off with the longest top and bottom panels and worked my way down from there size-wise, trying to minimize the amount of times I had to adjust the table saw. The finished enclosure size is 13 inches wide, 4.5 inches high, and 7.5 inches deep at the bottom. You can see here that the radio has curved corners. I wanted a half inch round over, but with one quarter inch material, that wouldn't leave enough meat in the corners. So I cut four little triangle gussets to strengthen them a bit. After a quick sanding where the parts will mate, it's time to start gluing things together. I glued the sides and back to the bottom. I used painter's tape to hold things in place. I also glued in the bottom two gussets, held in place with some spring clamps as well as the top gussets. Next, I scuffed the interior panels and glued them together outside of the enclosure. This is where I used a few scraps of 1 half inch MDF here, just to make gluing things together a bit easier. Now it's time to get all the pieces glued together. I probably should have drilled out the necessary holes for all the wires and stuff before doing this step, but thankfully it didn't end up being an issue, as you'll see in a bit. I used Gorilla Glue for these bits for its foaming and therefore superior sealing properties. There ain't no getting my fat hands in there after the top goes on. Lots of clamps and some weight in that hard to reach middle area and we wait a few hours for the glue to cure. You may have noticed that the front doesn't have that cool angle on it yet. I mean it probably is the main design feature of the radio after all. Here's where we take care of that. Enclosure, meet my table saw with a 15 degree bevel on it. My blade only extends so far so I made two passes. And done. Let's get the hole for the antenna drilled out. Then let's mark and drill the power switch opening. Now we'll mark and cut the opening for the terminal cup. We'll talk more about that later. Next up, measuring for the amp board drilling a few holes, and cutting the opening. Before I glue the front panels on, I need to get the necessary wires installed in the cabinet. So I have a few holes to drill. This would have been easier if I had drilled these holes before gluing the cabinet together, so I knew I had some drill bits long enough to reach inside, but if you don't, you'll definitely need to drill the holes before assembly. Here's a quick look at what I just did.
Now I need to install the wires and get them sealed up airtight where they pass through the panels. I'm going to fly through this, but basically I needed lines for the DC in from the terminal cup and a subwoofer line out to the terminal cup. Of course, speaker leads on both sides and an antenna lead going to the left speaker compartment. Now let's get the wires sealed up airtight. For that, I used some black RTV gasket goop that I already had. Basically, I'm just slathering this stuff in there on both sides of where each wire passes through a panel. And I gave this a day or so to cure. Then I tinned the ends of the wires, crimped on the appropriate terminals for both speakers, and also for the business end of the antenna lead. Now it's time to cut some panels for the front of the radio. Since the speakers I'm using have kind of a weird shape and I wanted to recess them, I ended up using two pieces of wood for the front. One quarter inch piece with regular round openings and an outer thinner one eighth inch piece. Well, why don't I just show you? You're smart, I'm sure you can figure out what I did. Ah, I see, the big guy's getting fancy here. Hey, if you think that's cool, check this out. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought there was some funny business going on there, but it's probably just the coffee. That stuff's amazing. Here's how that really happened. All right, let's get the front panels glued together. Then glue to the enclosure. Now I head to my sanding board to get the enclosure smoothed out all nice and even. Then I load up my router table with a one half inch round over bit to roll the corners on the sides of the enclosure. This oddly shaped piece of 3 quarter inch MDF scrap is going to become a base for the bottom of the radio. So lift it up a bit. <laughs> hey big guy, you might want to turn on your dust collection system every once in a while. There, that does the job just about right. Now let's drill and countersink a few holes so I can mount this base to the cabinet. Also, I like to drip some super glue on all the screw holes at this point to firm up the MDF fibers. I'm not sure if this helps a whole lot, but it sure can't hurt. Now I'm going to measure, mark, and drill a hole for the vent that I decided to add at pretty much the last minute. I've used these things before, they're called soffit vents, and although I don't think this amp will ever get super hot, I'd still like to have some way for heat to escape if it ever does start warming up. Better safe than sorry, you know? Now all that's left to do before I lay down my cool faux granite paint job is to prime the box. I'm using Vin Primer here. It's great for sealing up MDF because it dries so fast that it doesn't have a chance to really absorb into the wood which could cause it to swell slightly. What I'm applying here is the color base coat. I'm using what I had on hand, which happened to be a satin black primer slash paint from Krylon. 
I think a matte black might have worked even better here since I'll be putting a clear coat on top of this when I'm done. But like I said, I'm trying to use stuff up that I had laying around. Fortunately, I had just enough to cover the base, enclosure, and a test piece, which I'll need to get my technique down here on this Krylon marbleizing spray paint. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a giant. I am over six foot four, but this is just a really small can. Costs just as much as the big cans though, thankfully. Well, let's give this marbleizing paint a try here and see how I get along with it. I didn't even know about this stuff until my niece, Summer Lace, told me about it. Well, actually, she made us these cool faux stone coasters for Christmas, and we really loved how they looked. Once I saw how real that stuff looked, I knew it would make a cool finish for this radio, and also be fairly easy to do. I mean, I hope. Well, let's see how I do with it, though. Hey, that's kind of neat. I like that. It reminds me a little bit of how some contact adhesives come out of the spray can. Or even a little bit like Silly String. If you don't know what Silly String is, it's... A little like spray cheese, but it comes out a lot faster and you're not supposed to eat it. Although the red silly string does have kind of a tangy flavor. Do not eat silly string. Just because something smells good doesn't mean it tastes good, right? Just look at sauerkraut. You know, initially looking this thing over, I was afraid that I went a little crazy and put too much of the white marble paint on. But looking at some pictures of what marble is actually supposed to look like, I think I got pretty close, somehow. Okay, so I guess that came out pretty good. I need to let it dry for a full day or so before I hit it with some clear to both protect the paint and add some shine to the enclosure. Now I can start the assembly process. You saw this antenna assembly earlier, but here's a closer look. I drilled out a notch for the antenna barrel to sit in so the screw opening would be flush. And then the antenna just fastens to the block of wood with a screw, which also secures the wire that runs to the antenna for the FM radio. I glued that assembly into the inside of the back of the radio with some epoxy. Before I installed the drivers, I needed to apply a bit of gasket material to the inside mounting flange. And then I added some polyfill, about half a soccer ball size split in two. Slide on the wire terminals and screw the drivers in. I used number six black oxide screws for this. It's time to wire things up here, but rather than bore you with a play-by-play -play of every wire I soldered together on this project, I thought I'd just show you a little montage of the basics. Here's a schematic to clear things up. Since the preamp does not include an easy way to power on an amplifier, I just use a standard alternate action push-button switch to turn on the amp here at the top. It has a built-in 12-volt LED, so I wired in this resistor to reduce the voltage. The switch brings the 24 volts from the power brick to the amplifier module. We need to go direct to the preamp though, as well as reduce the voltage to 12 volts. I did this using an isolated DC to DC transformer. They're handy because they won't carry any ground noise from one device to another since they're isolated. The preamp can't be switched with a hard switch because it needs constant 12 volt power in order to save the FM radio station presets. Time to install the terminal cup, which houses the binding posts for the output to the subwoofer, as well as the DC input jack. Installing the amplifier panel. And finally, the preamp unit. Well, here she is. I have to say that I do kind of like the look. It's not the standard wood veneer that I normally would do, but it does look nice if I do say so. So let me explain what's going on here. This is a standard speaker terminal cup, and I'm using it here to get the 0.1 base signal to the subwoofer. I also installed an input jack to get the 24 volts DC into the unit. This is the amplifier board. The top knob is the main volume, the bottom knob is the subwoofer volume, and the middle knob is an old school tone control. If you're not familiar, turning the knob to the left reduces the highs, and turning to the right brightens them up a little bit. On this unit, it sounds best turned mostly all the way up, at least to my ears. And moving around to the front, well, there are the two full range speakers and the preamp board. I've already done a full video on the preamp board, so rather than go over that again, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, it has Bluetooth, FM stereo, and it can play MP3 files from USB and SD flashcards. Also, like I mentioned earlier, you can do a station search, and it will store the strongest FM stations in its memory. 
Well, as usual, there were a few more things I really wanted to talk about. For instance, the LR filter that I added to even out the frequency response on the full range drivers on the radio. But this video is running a bit long, so I'm going to end it here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Harmonious Table Radio. If you'd like more information, there will be links in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.